Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Another story making the news today. Foreign Minister Semeh Shukri headed Monday to the Hungarian capital Budapest to hold talks with his counterpart on bolstering cooperation and coordinate stances on regional and international matters of mutual concern. The ministry's press statement said that the visit aims to build on the outcome of uh, recuperated uh, visits, especially those paid by the Hungarian Prime Minister to Egypt in February. And that included signing the Strategic Partnership Agreement and a number of MOUs. During their joint press conference in February in Cairo at the Tahadeya Presidential Palace, President Abdel Fattah Sisi stated that he had agreed with the Hungarian Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, on expanding trade exchange. The President expressed appreciation for Hungary for increasing the number of undergraduate and graduate scholarships offered to Egyptian students to 200 starting the academic year 2023-2024. Talks tackle strengthening cooperation in the fields of agriculture, water management and irrigation, and transport. That is, in addition to increasing the number of tourists between both countries and localizing locomotive industry in Egypt. And we're joined over the phone now by Ambassador Hamdi Saleh, former Assistant Foreign Minister Ambassador Saleh. Good evening, sir. Hello. Hello, Ambassador Saleh. Good evening, sir. Hi. Uh, Your Excellency, now talking about Foreign Minister Sameh Shokri actually traveling today to the Hungarian capital, Budapest. He will be uh, meeting his uh, counterpart there, talking about many different things, strengthening bilateral cooperation, uh, working on issues of mutual concern. Now, what is the significance and the importance of such a visit by the foreign minister to Budapest at such a time? Look, uh, look it's, uh, it's a continuing effort by Egypt to relate to the Eastern European countries mm -hmm. in general. We are putting a, a, a high priority in our strategy to really connect with the major countries in, in Eastern Europe. And Hungary is a very important country for us. Uh, in the past, we used to get uh, so many industrial products and, uh, and uh, you know, machines and so on from Hungary, in addition to the fact that we have uh, continuing relations on so many uh, levels, either uh, trade or, or educational or political. Uh, so as a result of that, I think we are, this, this uh, visit will be a step or, you know, forward in really developing the relationship either on bilateral level. But, but at the same time, it's not only bilateral. This is an important tri trip to really explore ways to really, uh, you know, try to, s to smooth down the, the conflicts which are going on in Europe. Uh, you know, basically the, the, the war in the Ukraine and what's going on between the East and West and Hungary and in the middle between of that. Uh, you know, exploring the views and the ideas and so on of the leaders of Hungary will be very useful for us to see how this crisis can come to end. And uh, I think Egypt is very much concerned about this war. So uh, this trip is useful on the two, the two levels of bilateral and also international. Also in terms of really relating, uh, you, know, in, in the, the, in, you know, the foreign policy of uh, Hungary to the, the problems which are going on in the Middle East, either in the Palestinian issue or the, the, the Renaissance Dam of the, of the Ethiopian and the crisis or the, uh, the, the Sudanese conflict. Uh, all these things are very important to be able to move uh, into you know, discussion and to develop some kind of uh, a common understanding between us and the leaders of a country important as Hungary. Mm -hmm. Ambassador Saleh, if we are talking about the Russian-Ukrainian conflict, how influential can Hungary be in really trying to... Yeah, I, I, I can't hear you. Can you, can you uh, come closer to yes, the microphone? Yes, 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 sure. Well, uh, talking about the Ukrainian-Russian conflict, how influential can Hungary be in terms of exerting uh, certain efforts, diplomatic efforts, to try and mediate or solve or influence the conflict there? And do they see say, eye to eye to the Egyptian stance towards the conflict? Uh, I don't know exactly how far they see eye to eye with the Egyptian point of view. But the point is, this is not really to try to find uh, well, to explore what uh, Hungary can do to, to pressure or to influence the conflict. 
but basically to find out what their view is about, what, how they see the conflict, and what are the, the, you know, the channels which they might suggest in terms of re, you know, relieving the pressure on both sides, on the Russian side and the Ukrainian side. They are in the middle of the issue. They are in, very close to, to the Ukraine. And, of course, they are also very much familiar with Russia since they were part of the Soviet, you know, the Soviet bloc some time ago. So they are an important country, also an industrial country, and so on. And I think that would be very useful for us to see what views and ideas and opinions they might have. Mm -hmm. Your Excellency, now Egypt is really exploring the potential of transferring energy uh, to Europe. A lot of talk about deals uh, being made uh, through Italy, uh, trying to transfer electricity and maybe other sources of renewable energy to Europe. Can Hungary play uh, a part within the formula Egypt is trying to create economic and trade formula with the European continent? Yeah, this is a major project you are talking about, you know, the connection between Egypt and the European continent in terms of the energy and in terms of the electricity and in terms of the gas, the export, exportation of gas, and in terms also of uh, connecting in general. Uh, I think that will be most focused on, uh, on countries which are more closer to us, you know, the Mediterranean Sea, like Italy and France, and it will go as far as, you know, maybe Holland and so on. But it's very difficult to go as far as IS Hungary. But at least it, we, we keep in, you know, in touch, we keep in contact, and see what all other ideas we can develop together. Okay. At any rate, what I'm trying to say is that you know, there are so many uh, conflicts and issues which are facing uh, Egypt and facing us as a group of nations, either in terms of the war in Europe, in terms of the conflicts in the Middle East, in terms of you know, the changing positions of the East and West, of the Russia and the United States, and and even changing the positions in Turkey and so on. All these, uh, you know, uh, developments need to have, an, you know, an exchange of views. And Turkey and uh, Hungary is an important country which will have a certain impact on all these issues. And I think that would be very useful to the foreign minister to visit at this particular juncture. Mm -hmm. Do you see any tangible or immediate sort of results of such a visit? Maybe other agreements talking about uh, cooperation in terms of agriculture, water management, transport, the scholarships obviously that are being offered by Hungary to Egyptian students. Do you, do you see other results being achieved as, uh, from this visit other than talking about the political development taking place in Europe and also in the Middle East? The role of the foreign minister is to pave the way, but not to discuss specific technical issues, either in terms of agriculture or in terms of industry or in terms of education. So he paves the way in terms of the laying the grounds for further discussion in each area later on. We have already an expanded relations with the Hungary in education. A large number of Egyptian students are studying there and Arab students. We have already a very good relations with Hungary in terms of technology transfer. As several of the, you know, even in the, you know, the, the trains, we used to have Hungarian trains in Magari. And we, we have several uh, things which we have been cooperating with Hungary about. So I think uh, this uh, trip will be one of the other steps which we are being having uh, in the past to expand our uh, cooperation with this particular country and with this part of Europe, which is very important. Yes. Ambassador Hamdi Saleh, former Assistant Foreign Minister, thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, focusing on tonight's topic, empowering youth. Now, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has uh, directed to send draft laws for, uh, this, to the, of the Supreme Educational Council for national dialogue discussion, try and draft new laws working really on empowering the youth. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back.
President Abdel Fattah Sisi directed the government to hand over to the National Dialogue Board of Trustees a draft law establishing the Supreme National Council for Education and Training for discussion in the National Dialogue sessions before sending it to the House of Representatives. After holding a comprehensive session on education, the National Dialogue released a draft law on the proposed council. The council would be affiliated with the President of the Republic and is headed by the Prime Minister. It would include 26 members, 12 of whom are ministers and 8 are educational experts. The rest of the members belong to Al-Azhar University and vocational institutions. The council would convene at least quarterly in presence of more than half the members and at least three experts. Its decrees would pass with the approval of at least two-thirds of the attendees. If there is no majority, the decree would pass if the prime minister is in favor. A board of eight to ten trustees who are educational experts would report the council's meetings to the president every three months. It could also invite other experts to the council's meetings. The council would seek to unify policies of all types and stages of education and training in a way that achieves integration. It would also supervise the enforcement of these policies to connect the output of education to the demands of the local and international job market. Another priority for the Council would be to advance scientific research.